coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome uh that's embarrassing so what's up everybody and welcome to your next tutorial um in this tutorial we are going to start um we're going to actually start our class and actually getting our window displayed because it's fun and it's fun and all uh, creating message boxes but we want to ultimately create a window correct and so it, it's about seven steps in order to make a, a window. Some steps are longer than others. Some are really short, like one line long. Uh, but I split it up into seven different steps. And we're going to be covering four steps this tutorial. And then we're going to be covering three steps. And, and it really, actually, it's actually eight steps because we have to create this, uh, this uh, function. Um, so I guess the function will be like the last step. So it'll be like eight steps. So four steps this tutorial four steps to the next tutorial and we should have a window displayed now the reason why I'm splitting it up is because I don't want to make the videos way too long but I want and I want to explain everything in depth so with the windows.h class we get something um, called a uh, window class ex and there was a regular window class but we have window class ex and if you can't if you can't guess what ex stands for it means extended so it is an extension of the window class and we can do a lot of we have a lot of extended features that we can utilize if we would like to in the future so uh think of this as uh like this is a class right so we're just making an instance of a class and in the class we have a in this class we have a bunch of different uh, uh variables and and stuff like that and stuff that we have to set things to uh, so first we want to set uh, the CB size okay now CB stands for um, I believe it stands for the count of bytes so it's in the count of bytes in size and the reason why I'm trying to I might not know what every single thing uh, actually means um, but I'm trying to kind of explain what I, I know certain things mean because it might help you remember it if you know exactly what it means. If I don't know what something stands for, um, then I'll, I'll let you know. So this is basically just saying, okay, um, we want to get the size of the actual window class extended. And that's what we want to do. So we got the count of bytes and the size of it, and we use the size of to get the the size of the actual window class extended, and and it needs to know that so it knows how much memory to allocate and so on and so forth. So now we have uh, the WC, so that's a window class instance, and we have the count of bytes, and we have the the count of bytes class extra, and this is just for. Um, if you need any extra bytes for uh, this specific class type, uh, most times it's usually zero. Why is my zero key not working? Whoa, zero is not working. That is weird. Okay, I think I got it working. Okay, and uh, after that we have another thing that is normally to zero and that is the wind extra and that's just for the window so the extra bytes uh, if we need any extra bytes for the window of this particular class type um, usually this is set to zero and I don't know why this is doing this not sure why my computer is doing this okay and we now have to look at the um let me just put this up here so we're going to say the h icon small so this is a handle to the icon the small icon and usually we'll set this to zero and you can either set this to zero or no and man i'm really getting frustrated okay i just unplugged my keyboard and plugged it back in it's probably i don't know whatever um so now it's working and you can set these to zero or null, but as I mentioned before, null might be getting deprecated soon, so it's it's better to get used to actually using zero instead of null. So um, the reason why we set the small icon to zero is that if we when we set the larger icon, uh, this well basically the smaller icon is the icon that will be like displayed in the task manager and yada yada yada. But when we set the larger icon. 
if we don't have a value for the smaller icon, it will just reconvert it to the smaller icon. So there's no point in setting a small one and a large one. It will just resize it so it's the right size for the small icon. Okay. And next we have the H instance. So uh, I'm pretty sure we all know what this is. So it's the handle to the instance. And sorry about that. Uh, sorry about that. That was my girlfriend calling. Um, but what was that okay yeah so the h instance um so yeah this is just the handle to the instance so this is the h instance from right in our parameters okay now this one uh when you see this you're kind of like what is this right but remember if you know what this means um it might make things a lot easier uh, it's just that Windows probably I don't know why Windows or Microsoft whatever thought this was like a good way to name stuff but whatever so what the LP stands for is a long pointer the FN stands for function and this is window procedure so this is saying okay give me a long pointer to a function for the window procedure now this is going to be this is basically a function pointer so just to get that clear, this is the function pointer. Now we don't have the function actually created yet, uh, so we'll we'll just put that there. That's what we're gonna name it. Um, but we don't have it created, so we're gonna get an error. Um, don't worry, we'll fix that in the next tutorial. The next one we want to do is a style, and it's a it's a current style of the window. Now we're gonna be looking more into the style later on, but we just want to put CSH re redraw. Put the bitwise operator and put v redraw, and this is just gonna say okay. Um, uh, when you clear the screen, you do a horizontal redraw and a vertical redraw, okay. And uh, the next thing we have is th another confusing thing, is the LP uh, SZ uh, class name. So I'm guessing this is a, this is a long pointer. I think might that might be. Um, I'm not sure what the SSE stands for to be completely honest. Okay, so I just searched it up and it says that's a long pointer to a null terminated string, which is uh, um, like a, re a regular generic string, right? And uh, that is just uh, basically the name that we have to, the, the class name that we refer to so we can identify uh, which class we're talking about. Um, it's a very important that, um, that this class name it doesn't have to be simple or anything but it has to be something that is copyable and i i know i just made that sound confusing but whatever just name it whatever you like uh peter's class whatever just name it uh fairly simple uh what we're also going to do is we're going to get a w uh lps z to a menu name and we are going to um, we're just gonna set this to zero because right now we're not uh, we're not really focusing on that. We just want to get the window up. Now for the L, uh, one of you might some of you might be uh, wondering what the L stands for. It's just converting it to a wide char. So ra rather than a regular uh, char, it's just a wide char. Um, I, it's just required. I I think you might get an error without that. Yep. So just put the L in front of it, and you won't run into any errors anymore. So we just have a few more things that we've got to add before this tutorial ends. So we've got to add the uh, the cursor. Now to get the cursor, we're just gonna use a default cursor. So we have the H instance, but we don't have to set it to anything. Uh, we're using the default cursor. And we're gonna say IDC underscore, and we're just gonna put the arrow. So the default arrow that we get on Windows. Now, um, what does IDC stand for? So uh, the ID stands for um, like the identifier and the C stands for um, something different. Now um, some people believe that the C stands for control, some people uh, mean it stands for class or cursor or something like that. I'm pretty sure that the C stands for control, correct me if I'm wrong, um, or it could just mean it could mean cursors, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, whichever one it helps you um, identify it by um by all means um use it so anyways uh so it's so the id to a cursor and the cursor is is an error and so we're going to use wch icon and we're going to say load icon and we're going to do the same thing with the h instance 
and we have an ID and what do you think the last letter is I so we have an ID to an icon and we're just gonna say application so it's just gonna be a default icon we we're gonna be loading in our own icons uh, later on and um, I believe that's uh, oh no we have one more thing that we have to do uh, we have the uh, the H BR background um, so it's a handle to the brushes background okay so what we have to do is cast it to a uh, handle to a brush and the reason why we have to uh, cast it is this we're gonna make call make a call to a function called get stock object and we're gonna say black underscore brush okay and get stock object it could get uh, it can, it's used to get different types of objects it doesn't have to get a certain brush to to color the background it could be do, getting a lot of different things so what we do is we're saying okay we're getting an object but it's just a generic object what type of object is it and so we cast it to an H brush a handle to a brush so that we actually get the uh, correct um, correct um, input or correct thing that we need okay so let's consider the uh so we're done with all these things right now and um let's consider this uh step one so we can just put like step one up here so step one is done so now we're going to go to step two and uh step two to step four is relatively simple so we've uh we've created our class but now we got to register our class and uh, we're going to send a reference Sorry a reference to our window class and what this is going to do is if everything goes uh, Well, it's going to check us on the errors or anything that we put in wrong over here. It's gonna um, Just check for that and then if everything goes well, it's going to register our class for us so if all goes well, then we're going to call the we're going to first of all, we're going to make a global variable and we're just gonna make a handle to a window and we're just gonna call it a window handle and we're gonna say that the window handle is equal to create window ex so uh, there's a lot of different things and this is this might scare a lot of people I know half of it is like off the screen but I'm gonna be explaining it um, in depth so as you can see it says X style so these are extended sty extended styles that we can actually do that weren't actually accepted in the older versions of Windows so we're gonna do WS underscore EX except files and what this does is that if we were you know those programs where like, even YouTube does this where you can drag like uh, drag an image drag anything and drag it into the window and it could do something with it this basically says okay we can accept that so whenever you drag a file into the program you could do stuff with it but we're not really gonna get to in um, we're not really gonna be getting it too in depth for that anytime soon so as I said before the class name it has to be the exact same class name as you said right here so it knows um, which um, window we're dealing with right which which window class we're dealing with so just copy and paste it this is the window name so whatever the name that's gonna appear on the window so we can just say coding made easy or whatever um then we have um, the actual the regular style so we're just gonna say overlapped window so it when we run it it will overlap every other window we're gonna use a bitwise operator and by default we're just gonna set it to visible so it'll be visible by default the next one is the X and Y position so if we look on our computer screens uh, the the coordinate zero zero is at the very top left corner of our computer screen and then it goes all the way right depending on your resolution so if your resolution is 1920 by 1080 then it will the width of it will be 1920 the height of it will be by 1080 um, so uh, it just depends where you want your window to initially pop up so I'm just gonna put zero zero and this is the width of our window so and we need our height of our window so I'm just gonna put 800 by 600 uh, for the parent we can set that to zero for the menu we can set that to zero uh, we're gonna put our handle to our instance there and we're gonna just put zero there so that is let's just say that step three and for step four which is a really short step 
Uh, step four is we're gonna say we want to check if the window was actually created. So we're gonna say if it's equal to zero or no. If the window had no set to zero, then we're just gonna create a message box. <coughs> Sorry, uh, we're gonna make a message box um, that's going to uh, give us an error, and we we're gonna say create window failed or something like that, and we'll say error message. And we'll just put it to zero. We'll just do the OK message. And if you want, you can even add a return uh, statement after this. Because if there's no window created, you have no application. Um, but anyways, we're going to end this tutorial here. Hope you enjoyed it. I know it was kind of long. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And bye for now.